Hello. I'm so glad you're here with me. It is time for our Rise of the False Gods book study. And if this is your first time viewing, please know you can go to the um, to YouTube and type in Rise of the False Gods and you can see all the previous videos. Also know that I welcome questions and comments and input. And tonight uh, we are going to be looking at truth or consequences. I'm hoping I'll make it through. I say that every time. I hope I'm going to make it through the through the chapter, but usually I have a few side trips. But I'm hoping those little side trips are teaching moments. So um, anyway, we are going to be starting on page 141, halfway down the page. Now that's what I call progress. We're working our way through the book and uh, who knows, pretty soon we'll be past this and hmm, what will we be on to next? So this, as I said, is called Truth or Consequences. And what this is about is understanding the effects uh, and the causes that brought them about. Most of our moments of ultimate joy and deep pain are, are the larger kinds of effects or things we have done, the causes we sent forth. So we... Uh, <laughs> Hang on a minute. Cheryl says, did you let Bob Barker know? <laughs> oh, Bob, he's probably with us, isn't he? Because I believe he's on the other side now. So if he is, he's here for sure. Hosting the show. Okay. Um, by the way, questions and comments are not only welcome. I so excited about them. Don't always get to see them until after I'm done with the video, but I will catch up with you and answer any questions um, via the comment section when I get a chance to look at them. Okay, so I'm sure we've all had moments of temptation when we told ourselves just this once, or it's just a little white lie, or how about mine for this past week? It's the holiday, but it's the holiday. Yeah, well, that can put you in a pretty funky place and you'll come away from the holiday with more than presents. You'll be coming away needing bigger pants. <laughs> okay. Um, but what, what we do is we try to come up with excuses to uh, ignore or what we think might be evading the truth. But the thing is, truth and consequences, cause and effect, are like a boomerang. You throw it out there, sooner or later, it's going to come back and whack you in the head if you're not careful. Whatever we throw out is going to return. Um, okay, or it's like the game, Truth or Consequences. Under the influence of false gods, rather than accepting truth, we find it restricting and cumbersome. What are a couple of the things you go, well, yeah, but, but not me. But I've got a good reason that very often isn't a reason. It's an excuse. We find that we just want to do what we want to do despite knowing it's probably going to get us in trouble. In the unenlightened mind, truth is relative to what we want. So if we want it, it's therefore truth. And if we're told that's not good for us or whatever, that's not truth. Only the truth is what we think is the truth. And as long as we think like that, we are going to remain locked into the lower levels of consciousness, continually suffering and wondering over and over again, why is this happening to me? For example, masks. People that don't want to wear masks, you know. 
that doesn't really make a difference. There's people that wore masks and still got sick. It doesn't change the truth. The truth is masks save lives and prevent COVID spread. That's the bottom line. But if you want to evade the truth, you're going to have to accept the consequences sooner or later. Okay, now here we go. It's going to be another testy one because I'm going in directions that may challenge you. And the only thing I can say is please take a breath. Try to roll with me if you don't agree with what I'm saying. You know, once I click that uh, end live video button, you don't have to think about it again. Unless there's a little seed planted in your mind that suggests there may be more to this than you think. Okay, here we go. To buckle your seatbelt, gonna need it tonight. During the 2016 elections, the term fake news followed disparaging stories planted by Russians, trolls, and bots um, in, plan, in a plan to disrupt the elections. Voters took sides without researching the claims. So what happened is common sense and discernment went away and it was like a dark cloud, cloud of ignorance, a fog so thick that people to this day can't see through it. And I don't wanna wait till we all have to leave the planet to say, oh, now I see. That's why I'm doing these videos. I'm hoping that not only will you see, but if you already see, you will be able to share that one day with someone who may be open to hearing what you have to say. We are all a part of this whole thing because all things are connected. We are now, and, and I wrote this book, as I said, years ago, three years ago, but now we are really experiencing the effects, but the effects are greatly manifest, man, magnified because we didn't listen and take action earlier. We sat back, we shook our heads, and we thought, those damn fools aren't listening. They don't know what they're talking about. They believe that hooey. And we didn't even try to educate ourselves to the point that we could speak truth with love and speak truth to power, which has not happened. It hasn't happened by too many people. We're only praying knowing that as each one of us prays and strives to see the light, the light will manifest. We don't want to have a little bit of too little too late. Now, um, we're all a part of it because we're all connected. That probably upsets you. You say, well, I wasn't a part of it. Well, yeah, you probably were. If we all, all, because we're all connected. There's no way around it. I'm not saying we even knew what to do. But if we didn't do anything, it's a part of it getting bigger. There are things we can do. Contact our representatives. Speak out. Demand truth. It upset me to write these words, so it's no wonder that it would upset you to hear them. But I know it's true. Through research, experience, and knowledge of spiritual principle. A lot of times we did not do the work because we were being lazy and narcissistic. We just said, no, I'm, I can't be bothered with that. Well, guess what? Now... The effect is so exacerbated, it is actually frightening. And many people will say how frightening it is. We have to ask ourselves straight up, if we want change, can I handle the truth? Can I handle personal responsibility? A more appropriate question might be, can I handle the consequences? At this point in time, if we don't stand up and face 
what is happening, it is going to get worse. That's how it got this bad, and it's going to get worse until and unless we address it. We may deny truth, but that doesn't make it any less true. It is, truth is truth. You know what? I'm going to have to pause a minute. I didn't realize my battery was gone. I'll be right back. In the meantime, think about it to yourself. How is it that denying truth could make it not true anymore? Think about the times in your own life where you have fought that battle and maybe wanted to deny truth and ask yourself, how's that working for you? I'll be right back. Are you thinking about the ways that you were trying to deny truth, to make truth not true? Hang on. <laughs> Ta-da! I'm back. All right. So, hopefully you got some thoughts about that. I tried to deny truth so many times in my life, and I think there's times I do it even now. But now, with my knowledge of spiritual principle, I am more able to nip it in the bud, to stop it before it blossoms into more pain and suffering. We may deny the truth, but it's still true. Every thought, word, and action contrary to truth will have consequences. Well, of course, every thought, word, and action is going to have consequences or, or effects, not consequences, because consequences are kind of like not pleasant, whereas effects are, you know, try to remember, try to make it principle, not personal, okay? My goal is to stop suffering in your life, in my life, and in the world. That's one of my goals. I can't reach anybody, but if I can reach somebody, then that somebody can reach somebody. Eventually, the light, the dawn will come. Okay. As a part of a greater whole, the whole will feel the effects of the consequences. Each life affects the whole. This includes action or refusal to act. This isn't punishment, it's effect. It's like symptoms that come up for healing. If your mouth ingests poison, the whole body is affected, right? Or if you think you want to have a few more cocktails because they are tasting really good, well, the whole body not only gets a hangover, it could die. I mean that you know you know that is uh, that is why people get drunk. The body is poisoned, and when when young people a lot of times brag about going out to get you know to get drunk or they talk about being blackout drunk, they don't realize that. It happens because you were close to death. Your body functions were not working. This is not punishment. A hangover isn't punishment. It is an effect. I am just guess I'm sharing this because New Year's, we're approaching New Year's Eve. It's a pretty good time to look at something like that. Do not be deceived, the scripture tells us. A man reaps what he sows. And so do women and children for what that's worth. 
because the consequences may not appear immediately, we may think we've evaded the law. You know, uh, you can eat a whole cake and uh, get on the scale and you're not going to see much of a change in your weight. Give it a few days. <laughs> but it's all like that. We can lie to ourselves and lie to ourselves. Eventually, it, it's going to catch up on us. Okay. Principle is absolute, eternal, and unchanging. The law is immutable. It is not breakable. Unbreakable. Too often we find out too late the magnitude of the effects. That is happening right now with what is going on uh, with the January 6th um, confirmation of the Electoral College. Uh, and if you're listening from out of the country, it's just in the United States. And um, uh, there's calls for protests and violence and the calls painfully are being made by the current president who lost the election. He lost it. We're talking, talking 7 million votes. One of the most tightly scrutinized elections ever. Poll watchers, everything. 60 cases in court that 59 were thrown out. Wild lies. Well, those, my dear friends, those wild lies have been flying since before he went down that escalator to declare he was running for president. He has lied, I don't know, last count I read was like 18,000 times. These are, these are verifiable lies, blatant, verif and, and it's not just that he lies that many times. He repeats them and repeats them and repeats them. And remember what we talked about with the law of seven, the rule of seven. You keep repeating it, people are going to buy it. Doesn't matter whether it's true or not. And that's where we've gotten ourselves by having Cause, causes and effects, but the effects overlooked. Newton said, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. However, that's not how it works in the spiritual realm. Fillmore explained the principle we call the law of increase. It operates as everything we send forth comes back, not equal, but multiplied. So every lie, if you lie to people, you're probably going to get lied to a whole lot by other people. You're sending forth negative cause, you're going to get negative effect. Your whole world can crash down because also you get caught as, and noted to be a liar. Nobody's going to believe anything you say. And that's the truth with me. If you ever lie to me, you're never going to know I know. But I will not accept anything at face value that you say again. It's not personal. It's principle. So what we send out comes back multiplied in kind. If we send forth a tithe with a clenched fist coming from a belief in lack, we may expect an increase of what we sent forth. If you're looking for money, that ain't going to be it. Because what you're going to get is what you expected. Lack and limitation. The laws operate first in mind. Then they manifest. I like to put it this way. Everything we send back, back comes... Da, da, da. Everything we send forth comes back blessed and multiplied, or if you send forth something that is bad, negative, it's going to come back cursed and multiplied. Now, when I say cursed, I don't mean somebody put a curse on it. I mean it comes back in kind. If you sent out something slimy, you're going to get something slimy back. Sooner or later, it will happen. Okay, now, very important. Um, uh, Jesus said, "If you ever, if you ever kind of wondered about this 
uh, saying of Jesus, even if a man looketh upon a woman with lust, he hath already committed adultery with her in his heart. So it's like, all right, if you, if you entertain the thought, entertaining the thought is planting a seed. And once we plant that seed, it sets down roots and it grows. And the longer we let it grow, the deeper the roots go. That's why you want to pay attention to what seeds you are planting. So when, let's just look at it in the way that the scripture said it, which was sexually, that you start thinking, like you may see someone and go, ooh, you know, and, and that, you know, hey, look, God does good work. There's a lot of beautiful people out there. As a matter of fact, I saw this guy the other day. I don't know. He was on in a movie or something. And I thought, oh, <laughs> that guy is gorgeous. Now, I have no interest in any <laughs> attacking him, but I can acknowledge when I see something good, right? I mean, good is good, you know? Tight abs, you know, not going there. But see what I'm doing? I'm talking about you. You have the thought, and then you start to build on it. And then it grows bigger and those roots go down and you think you just got to have it. Now that happened to me last night with a little eggnog. I had already consumed sufficient amount of whatever because why do I tell myself, well, it's the holidays. Hmm. Yeah, right. Easy to say. And <laughs> my mother, mama, had a good saying about that. And she would always say, a moment on your lips, a lifetime on your hips. My mama spoke truth. But anyway, so I was watching, I was watching a movie uh, on my computer with my daughter, who's thousands of miles away. And um, so we're watching the movie and I'm thinking, oh, I, could, I could go for some eggnog. And I said, no, I don't really need the eggnog. Well, I thought about, you know, it's going to be the end of the holiday season pretty soon, and there won't be any more eggnog. And, well, you know, that, that eggnog might spoil. And, well, you know, you did do jazzercise this morning. I know you burned up calories. Well, of course you know it was minutes before I had a glass of eggnog sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. And I very dutifully looked up and saw that eggnog can be frozen. So there was no need to use that excuse. Well, it's going to spoil. And it probably would have been far better if after I had my initial glass or two of eggnog, I put it in a container and put it in the freezer because then I would not be tempted out of sight, out of mind. If you let it get into your mind, it's going to take roots Whatever you're talking about, if you're talking about jealousy or anger or anything, you can't let it take root. This isn't personal. It's principle. It's how the law works. Some people would say God is punishing us for our sins. But God does not punish, punish us for our sins. As um, Myrtle Fillmore said, we are not punished uh, by for our sins. We are punished by our sins. It comes back. That is a fact. Okay. <clears throat> it is important to keep in mind this works on the individual and the collective level. The place we are now where we have this great concern that is facing us for January 6th, an attempt for a bully override of our election called out by a so-called president who, who has none of the qualities that a president should bear. Sorry, folks, you're going to hear it the way I see it. And how do I know? I can line up everything. You want to say what Jesus said? Love God. Love yourself, love each other, love your enemy. 
That means you don't call names. It means you don't point fingers. It means you don't lie. It means you don't cheat. It means you don't steal. And when we can point out all the times that occurred, sorry, that's where I'm at. If you want to turn off and leave me, God bless you. I love you. Bless you on your way. But if you uh, want to just roll around in your head the things I'm saying, understand that these causes you can't say you can't say it's okay if he did this or he did that because of the economy that is bull god is our source if you are looking at the economy and voting on the economy regardless of the horrible things that have happened because of these decisions to our planet to our people the blessings that went to the 1% leaving the 99% burning and hungry, okay? Just saying, think on these things. That's the courage. But I only can say it this strongly with conviction because I've watched it. I've watched it. If you pay attention, you'll realize what I'm saying has a point. Eric Butterworth said, we can't break the law, but we can break ourselves against it. And that's what we're doing. Because we will not collectively do what we have to do. We will not break laziness and narcissism. And we will do what is inconvenient and uncomfortable to bring forth a better world for ourselves, our children, their children, and our what is it Biden said? He said, they're not our enemies, they're our opponents and our opponents as well. So we want good for all people. That's a wonderful test of are you being delusional about who's at blame or at cause or whatever, or are you making a righteous decision? Righteous decision means you would make it no matter who said it, no matter who did it. Okay. So what we have, what happens when we break spiritual law is that we are, um, when we break spiritual law, we are breaking ourselves against it because of the effects, which is called suffering. If you exaggerated on your resume, then resume, then got fired because you really didn't have the skills you claimed. It becomes really clear, uh, why you would get fired. You're told not to lie. If you lie, you're going to have the effects. Hopefully we learn from this kind of suffering and don't repeat it. Then we achieve spiritual mastery. First, identify the cause behind the suffering, a.k.a. the effects. Once we can do that, we can banish the false gods, the false sense of good, the false belief in a good other than what is good for all, soon as we can identify that, we're going to do good. We will create a wonderful world to live in. As above, in higher consciousness, so below, in the manifest realm. We hear questions every day from many sources regarding how it is possible for the current administration. How can they accept the dangerous and unsound agenda, which has increased? I don't even know where this is going because I'm going to tell you something. Talk about nucleating negative energy. What do we do? Keep our peace. Stay grounded. Remember one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives, God the good, omnipotent. And I have to say that many times a day because I still have a long way to grow. How can people follow a leader who reflects none of the values we hold as Americans? There is a simple answer. They believe they are protecting their positions. Oh, okay. As I, I misspoke earlier. Same idea. But how can the leaders, how can our, our political leaders follow this leader? How come they're not standing up against him? Well, they are afraid. They will lose their power, their position, and the money associated with it. So what is the cause of that? The false god Baal, which is ego and self and sensual stuff, and 
mammon, which is money. They don't want to lose their money. They don't want to lose their power. Those are false gods. They are false sense of good. Better a legislator should stand up and say, my dear constituents, I will not take you down this path. I am going to call out what is absolutely right and true and good for everyone. Because when you do that, even if you get fired, Spirit is going to provide you with a far better job than the one that you lost. And that's a fact. And you will gain respect for honesty and stating the truth as it is. Okay. Um, when under the influence of false gods, we cling to a false belief in personal power and financial wealth equaling riches. We can see this happening in this administration. The White House has confirmed to be in chaos. There are the effects of deceptions. Remember back during, uh, during the Mueller investigation when people who were supposed to be called to, um, to appear uh, to testify or whatever you call it, to be interviewed, um, and they would, not, uh, they would be told not to go. Don't go. And whereas uh, the Democrats could have forced, they could have subpoenaed those people. And if they didn't ask for the subpoena, they could have put them in jail. But they didn't. See, this is when negative cause is made and the, it, the, the effect is felt, but it is not addressed. This is everything in your life. Even, you know, we love our kids so much and sometimes they, they lie to us or they break something and said they didn't break it and they look at us with these big teary eyes. I didn't do it. And you know, they're lying. If we do not discipline our children, I'm not telling you to beat them. I'm telling you to discipline them, help them understand the effects of the causes they sent forth that are bringing this discipline. Even in the Bible, it says, uh, who, who the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. Being, experiencing the effects of our negative actions is not, as I said, punishment. It is a coming up. It is a bringing to awareness that what was done was not right. Okay, now this, like I say, uh, we may normalize lying, but that won't neutralize spiritual law. Lying should never be neutralized. If people lie, you can't trust them. If you can't trust someone, what in God's name are you going to find to build security in your life? Okay, now I, I, I know it's really hard to, uh, to say this, um, but it has to be said. Again, I'm pointing out, I wrote this years ago, three years ago. If America does not soon stand up, we will all reap the toxic crop from fields we did not sow. Education and enlightenment are our most powerful weapons. Even if everyone in the world is clinging to lies it will benefit us to stand on truth because the truth we stand on is building our future. No matter what that looks like, stand on truth. Speak your truth. Speak it with love, but my dear friends, speak it. One of the people who has earned my sincere respect and admiration for his commitment to standing for what he knows to be true is John McCain. Republican. It's not about what party you're in. It's how you play your part. And at this time, of course, he was still with us. Even in the face of a debilitating terminal illness, he manages to stand up and speak out for what is right. Can we not do the same thing? Think about Patrick Henry. Give me liberty or give me death. I don't want to die. I don't want to die for my beliefs, but I don't think that's necessary. Someone said to me in a post today, um, 
please tell me you're not going to come and shoot me and my son for what we believe politically. And that's terrifying. These are p thoughts people are holding. They are so concerned about what's going to happen. So what if we lay down and say, okay, okay, Don, okay, Don, stay in the White House. It's okay. We'll, we'll deal with it because we're terrified and bullied. What's going to be the outcome of that? If you don't think you're going to get more of the same, my friends, wake up. Wake up. We need a real wake up call. Anybody that's sitting on a fence, stop. Educate yourself. Turn on the light that's already in your soul. Okay. We have to take on a greater responsibility to live what we've learned. To do that, we will need to unlearn habits and beliefs that we have held for decades. Change is uncomfortable and we don't like discomfort. I have a friend whose favorite saying was, don't should on yourself. Because we very often use the word should inappropriately. Like if we say, well, I really should, blah, blah, but we really don't want to. You know what? You do it or you don't do it. Don't give me the should stuff. But there are many things that we should do. We should stand for truth and justice and equality and freedom and love and all the values that we were taught to us by all our religious leaders, whatever the faith group because every faith group does have the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That is so simple. Look, friends, that's cause and effect. Do unto others cause as you would have done unto you. Effect. She had the best intentions of removing unnecessary guilt or taking on responsibilities. However, people who did not want to change used it as an excuse. Well, I'm not going to shoot on myself. I don't want to do that, so I'm, I'm just not going to shoot on myself. Her saying rightly used is a good thing, but manipulating the words to avoid the work we need to do to attain spiritual mastery just keeps us stuck. Whether we should do something is situational. The key to discernment is through meditation and critical thinking. It is from learning and living spiritual principle. Yeah, I went way over tonight, but I'm done with that chapter. And that was a toughie. Uh, let me see what's coming up next. Getting to cause. So hopefully that will help. I'm sorry if you feel I ref, read, rode roughshod tonight, but we're in a critical point in our country right now. And it's no time for pussyfooting around. We've got to speak our truth, speak it with love, learn to love even those people that tap dance on your last nerve because that's how change is going to occur. We must think out of the box. Keep reminding yourself we have to keep out of the box the box is an eye for an eye and a truth tooth for a tooth spirituality says break that pattern find another way get out of the box the box is a coffin well think on that i hope you have a pleasant evening and a good day tomorrow and i hope you will Come see me tomorrow night so we can talk about getting to cause. Take care.